Hello, my name is Dr. Becky Berg, and I am the superintendent of the very proud Eastmont School District. Thank you for taking time right now to look through our informational presentation about our upcoming bond issue that will be on November 8th. Hopefully we will answer any questions that you have. If you do still have lingering questions when we're done, please give any administrator a call. Call me here at the district office and we'd love to have a conversation with you about our schools. Enjoy. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Charlton. and I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education. And this slide represents our commitment to our community to build quality schools that will last a long time, but that are Fords, not Cadillacs, and try to avoid the frivolous, non-essential things that some school districts uh, put into their facilities. In 2001, our school district uh, requested and the voters approved a bond, and that bond built two new schools in our district. Eastmont Junior High was completed in 2003, and Clovis Point Intermediate, now elementary, was completed in 2004. Both nice facilities that will last this community for many more years. Grant Elementary and other schools were modernized in a 2010 bond. This is how it looked before, and this is how it looked after when completed in 2012. And still to this day, it looks wonderful. That is the standard of elementary schools that we would like to have all of our elementary schools be at. So later on in the presentation, we ask you to consider, uh, do we need to uh, modernize some other schools? Please keep in mind, this is the standard we'd aspire to. Sterling Intermediate School was also modernized and completed in 2013. It is now a junior high and is serving the community very well. I actually attended that school over 40 years ago and it is still in use and still a very functional school for us. Eastmont High School was modernized and completed in 2014 with that same bond. And it is a wonderful school, one that you can be proud of as a community, that our students have all the programs and uh, training and education that they're gonna need to go on and be successful and come back and support our community. Most recently in 2016, the Eastmont School District asked voters to approve a capital levy and they called it phase one because they explained at that time, we would need to come back later and complete the beginning projects that this uh, capital levy would do. So we built 20 classrooms in five different elementaries across our school district, and we modernized cafeterias and kitchens at Cascade, Kenroy, Lee, and Rock Island. We did this with a state grant, a competitive state grant for K-3 classroom spaces that was written uh, in the amount of $10 million. And so anytime we can add state or even federal funds to our local contribution, we do that and it helps offset how much we have to pay locally. These pictures here are just a couple of the improvements that were made. You can see those are wonderful class sizes, uh, classroom spaces, lots of nice built-in cabinets, and the cafeterias are gonna serve us for a long time. Hi, my name is Spencer Taylor, and I'm the Executive Director of Elementary Education for Eastmont School District. A huge thanks to our community for the support of Phase 1. Those uh, extra classrooms, cafeterias, and kitchens are truly making a difference. They're beautiful spaces that will serve our students and our community well for a long time. Thank you. Well, now that Phase 1 is complete, we are looking at Phase 2. We made a commitment to our community that phase one was the start and we wanted to finish the good work that uh, we had done and we promised. And that is in phase two, this bond proposal for $185 million. And as you can see, that will include full modernizations at Cascade, Kenroy, Lee, and Rock Island Elementary Schools. And then safety improvements at all of our schools, athletics improvements, and a new transportation center. I'm going to tell you uh, in detail about those parts of this bond proposal. Cascade Elementary School, built way back in 1967, then modernized in 1994. It's sharing its age, and it was designed uh, back in a different time where safety wasn't as big of a concern. Those exterior pods, which I'm going to show you, um, are not best practice. Best practice is our goal, and that is to have a single point of entry and have enclosed uh, hallways and classrooms so students can be uh, more safely um, supervised and the campus kept more secure. So uh, Cascade is a pod uh, style campus and so that means there's groups of classrooms that are separated by exterior hallways 
students to walk to the office have to walk outside their classroom down these long hallways and then to the front. This is the main entrance of Cascade. And then to get to the main office, as this young lady is doing, you need to um, press the doorbell or knock on the door to be admitted into the office. We keep all of our exterior doors locked just to make sure that we are as safe as possible. So one of the top priorities would be safety and security. And that would mean a uh, facility replacing these pods. Uh, as you can see from these photos, uh, the facility and the materials are just showing their age. There's dry rot. There's just worn out materials. The heating cooling system is failing. Um, it just takes a lot of maintenance just to keep it going for a little while. The gym floor, this is a temporary gym floor that was put over the old linoleum floor or vinyl floor. And that uh, vinyl floor had separated from the concrete and it was rolling, it was a trip hazard. And so this uh, temporary uh, floor was installed. This will need to be replaced by a modern hardwood floor. So part of this modernization would be to uh, replace all of the mechanical infrastructure, electrical, uh, plumbing, um, network, HVAC, etc. The exterior uh, is showing its age as well. The asphalt is old and cracking, lots of uneven surfaces that are trip hazards, really difficult for students who uh, have accessibility needs to get around the campus. We only have two doors that have the ADA powered push button, and that means there are 58 doors that do not. The playground would be replaced by a pour in place rubber with uh, equipment that can be accessed, accessed by all kids, even those with accessibility needs. These portables are old. They've been here for decades and they are showing um, signs of age and those would be replaced with brick and mortar classrooms. And then lastly, we have parking and pickup drop off issues at Cascade as well as all of our elementary schools. This is an end of the day photo of parent pickup going down Ashland up 23rd and blocking even Baker. Over here, this was a gravel uh, driveway that was installed to help alleviate some of those issues. There's just no space to park in the parking lot. So our staff have resorted to parking on this formerly was a lawn and now it is basically dirt and dead grass to make room for our staff to park. This is, you'll see, Similarly, with all of our schools, it's a first draft of what it could look like, um, the newly modernized uh, Cascade Elementary School. In red outline, that is uh, the current pods that will be demolished and they will be replaced by classrooms. We anticipate this may be a two-story building with a single point of entry in the main office and in this nice large parent parking lot, pickup drop-off area, and then have buses off of Baker on this side. Would, be, would get a new playground, would get um, uh, some extra support um, classrooms like for special education, uh, music, etc. Kenroy, built in 58, modernized in 1988, recently had uh, five classrooms added and a cafeteria and kitchen. Very similar to Cascade as well as you'll see this theme in all of our elementary schools. You have outside uh, hallways, so students go to and from the office and other classrooms. The main entrances are not best practice. Uh, the office cannot see who's coming and going until they're inside, so these doors are now locked. Um, just a lot of uh, security needs that need to be improved. 39 exterior doors. Uh, we want to change our school so we have just a few main entrances and exits that we can keep on um, automatic lock unlock schedules when needed and then the rest would be interior doors to classrooms. Just showing some of the age in the building uh, from the cracking uh, mortar and bricks uh, becoming loose to all the uh, conduit with electrical um, going throughout the building. This is the water main that has been repaired. Uh, it has failed twice in the past couple years and we even had to cancel school. This is the excavation showing uh, where that pipe is going. Um, yeah, that, would, that needs to be replaced as well as all of the uh, plumbing and electrical like I uh, shared earlier. Uh, playground, similarly to Cascade and the other schools, it is just old and uneven and uh, falling apart. 
five portables to be replaced. Uh, we've been told that these portables may not make it uh, through a move because they've been there for a couple decades. Um, <clears throat> and then at the end of the day, we have pickup, drop off concerns, uh, congestion, safety concerns that a new uh, school facility would really improve. This is what Kenner Elementary School could look like, our first draft. Again, red is the areas that would be demolished. And then we'd have uh, this new bus uh, pickup drop off off the back off of Kansas and the long parent pickup drop off area and then a lot more parking spaces. Dark blue are the uh, remodeled or new additions and the off white, those that's that construction we just completed. Uh, so that would stay as is. And then the light blue is the um, modernization that happened in the early 90s that we would leave uh, in place. Lee Elementary School, similar to the others, built in the 50s, modernized in 88. Lots of uh, exterior doors. These are the portables on this side. Uh, the office main entry is not um, best practice. And then you see some of the doors just showing their age. So we would, again, have a single point of entry, all interior hallways, and get rid of those portables. You know, when you uh, have a school that's been around for, oh gosh, 65 years, and it has had some updates, but it didn't cover everything. And even those updates happened almost 30 years ago. Um, you can see just some of the molding falling apart, rusting, dry rot, just wear and tear on these doors that have been used a lot, single paned windows, uh, HVAC that is uh, barely hanging on and then the laminate is separating. So that would replace all of that. Um, outside in the playground issues, just as the other schools, uh, we have a tether ball that is, was in uh, dirt and mud and now it's sand, but that it should be in asphalt. So the kids need to stay clean and safe. Um, and then accessibility needs in the interior. There's a restroom, we put a garbage can right there just so you can see the width. It's really narrow. Uh, when you build a school uh, that long ago, you just really need to replace all that and have spaces where all of our kids can access uh, easily. All these old portables, they're just showing their age, would be replaced with brick and mortar um, classrooms. And again, end of the day, a lot of people coming and going. Uh, we want to make sure it's as safe as possible. And we have spots for everybody to park and everybody to pull in so we get people off of uh, 5th and 15th in this case. This is what Lee could look like, again, in the dark blue. That is the, uh, the new classrooms that would replace what was in red, uh, which would be demolished. And then we have those brand new spaces that we added to get us by, and we'll make sure that it all fits together seamlessly. Bus loop separated from the parent pickup drop-off area. Rock Island, built in 36, modernized in 94. We had some classrooms added. Again, you go to the front door, that doesn't, that doesn't lead you to the office unless you go in through another door. So very poor visibility uh, with the main entrance doors, lots of exterior doors throughout the campus. Um, yeah, it's showing its age as well. We've got tile that's separating, HVAC going out, some cracking, crumbling in the foundation, rust happening on some of the doors, uh, just needing to be replaced. Parking issues, a gravel parking lot, and then we have pickup drop-off issues. Uh, it's Rock Island Road right there as well. This is what Rock Island could look like. This is the new addition right here. We would take the office from this side off of Center Street and Rock Island Road and put it kind of the back off of just Center Street. So we'd see who's coming and going, a single point of entry, as you can see right there, parent pickup, drop off, and then we put the buses in the back there. The rest of this would be remodeled to maximize use of, of all the space at Rock Island. Sterling Junior High School would also have an addition in this bond. You'll see that these blue uh, classroom spaces here on this map would be added in where currently we have 13 portables that are in a, a bad state. These classrooms would range from CTE classrooms to possibly some music classrooms. We also house our preschool and our childcare in this area currently. And we even have an alternative program for our high school that's housed here. 
So these classrooms would replace portables, we would add an additional parking there, and it would help make Sterling Junior High a complementary junior high to the junior high that's across the street, Eastmont Junior High. In this video, you're going to see a mom and her child coming into the school, and at first they, they try to go down towards the school itself, then they come in and try to get in the office, and we're demonstrating here that this would be a security vestibule. Something like this would be built at each of our campuses. Eventually, we'll have the ability to buzz and allow someone to enter the building with a video camera system um, where we could see, do they have a reason to come in? Are they a legitimate visitor? So it's just an example of, of some of the security improvements that we would make on all of our campuses. Athletics um, are an important part of uh, a school experience. And at Eastmont High School, we do have some aging athletic facilities that will need to be addressed. Uh, the track, soccer, and football field facilities, uh, the, the bleachers have been there for a very long time, the uh, visiting bleachers, that's what this picture is of. You can see that the track is in need of resurfacing and the field actually needs to be regraded. And the football field <clears throat> as a whole would probably change, we'd probably widen the track and create a different track structure there. Uh, in the next picture here, you'll see some tennis courts up here that are needing to be renovated and, and repaired. And the final uh, priority in this bond would be to add a softball complex for our girls in this part of our area here that could work in complement with our boys facility. They could share some facilities, hitting cages, things like that. But that would bring our girls onto the high school campus versus having to play and practice up at Sterling Junior High. The final project in this bond would be a transportation cooperative center. Now the word cooperative means that we would continue to serve and expand serving smaller school districts with servicing their vehicles. Um, we could also possibly enter in agreements with uh, public agencies and uh, it would create a, uh, a campus, and I'll show you the picture here, uh, where we'd have the capacity to do a lot of those type of things. We'd have our own fueling station, we'd have covered parking for all of our buses, we would build in ahead of time the capacity to have electric vehicles should that become efficient affordable in the future, and we'd have an office space and even some meeting spaces for trainings, that type of thing. The district purchase property, if you go up Grant Road, right before you get to Vanwell Nursery on your left, you'll see right now a pumpkin patch, and that is the 10-acre parcel that we have purchased in advance for this. We also received a grant uh, from the state for about $6 million to put towards this project, so that will help, help offset, again, our local costs. Hello again. I have a few uh, more details for you uh, regarding the financing of the bond. Uh, first of all, there's a difference between a levy and a bond. A levy, we come to you periodically, and uh, with your support, we're able to really have the whole child education that Eastmont is known for. Usually, levy dollars are spent on athletics, um, the arts, on, uh, for instance, if the state funds a, a quarter of a teacher we will fund the rest if we feel like the program is meaningful for our kids. If the state funds a 0.5 counselor, we'll round it out to make a full-time counselor at a school. Those are examples of how we spend some of our educational programs and operations levy dollars. There's also a, a capital levy, and that is used for facility improvements it is usually of a smaller scale. Uh, the Eastmont community voted in um, a capital levy in 2016, and that is how we've uh, built some cafeterias and some classrooms that you've been hearing about. Both a, a whole child enhancement levy and a capital levy pass at 50% plus one, a simple majority. A capital bond is what we're, we're running this time on November 8th. A capital bond must pass at a 60% or higher rate, which is a super majority. So it's definitely um, a commitment and it should be because it's a large scale building project. Our timeline is aggressive. It is aggressive because our kids need these um, upgrades now. It's also aggressive because there's a certain formula where we can get extra money from the state called state match. So these projects are about once a year. We have two in the year of Sterling and Lee, um, but about once a year over the next, from 2023 to 2027, the athletics facility at the high school will chip away at the projects throughout the timeline. 
The million dollar question is, what does it do to my wallet and my pocketbook? Well, actually, um, we've modeled this on a $465,000 average price home in East Wenatchee. Uh, so this will be a bit of an increase, about $200 a year more than in 2022. Uh, you'll see our graph here. So in 2013, the combined rate, combined meaning any capital levy, m and levy, um, bond, combined school tax rate was 494 in 2023, it will be $4.09. Uh, so it's almost a dollar less per thousand than um, in 2013. We truly believe we're being responsible with the tax dollar. Uh, where you will feel the difference, of course, is that our homes have uh, appreciated quite a bit in that amount of time. You may think, why now? You know, we all wonder that. It's never easy to ask for tax dollars, and we know it comes at a cost. Uh, for us, uh, a paramount uh, uh, moral imperative, basically, is our student and staff safety. Um, and I'm not saying that to guilt anyone. I am saying that to we have a responsibility to make the facilities our children work in, live in, and grow in to be as safe as we can. Um, we can never prevent an emergency 100%, but we can sure try consistently to, to harden our schools and make it harder for bad guys to get in, honestly. Um, we are about 100 students over projection. We usually budget very conservatively and, and spend conservatively, but that 100 students tells us that the business and industry growth in East Wenatchee is starting to have um, an effect of more kids in our schools. So that's a really, really good sign. Uh, another reason of why now is that escalation costs uh, don't seem to go down, as we all know from life. So one quote, um, according to the Association of General Contractors, materials have risen 20% in the last year. You can find anything from 10% quoted to 25 and 30% quoted. Um, but what we do know is that it will go up every year that we wait. Uh, Sterling Junior High will, for instance, go up a million dollars a year in the cost to, to build if we do wait. Finally, state match. Uh, those are all of our tax dollars, but those are given to school districts when they can pass a construction bond. And that is based on the age of facilities and number of unhoused students. So some of our, our facilities qualify right now for that state match and may not in future years. For more information, we encourage you to go to the website that's located on our main Eastmont School District web page. And if you go to bond information, this page will come up. And there's lots of helpful tools there for you to understand more fully what we're trying to do in this bond proposal. There is one tool there that I point out. It's called Bond Tax Calculator. And in there is a downloadable worksheet. So we're going to click that. And you would download onto your computer this document. And if you click Enable Editing, what this is is a tool so that you can see what exactly this would cost you in local taxes. So you put your home's value in here. Right now we have $400,000 in there. You can change it to whatever you'd like. Let's change that to $450,000. And it will calculate what you're paying currently in total schools tax. That's for the EPNO levy, for the bond, and for the capital projects levy that will be retiring in about a year. This person would pay $1,400 a year or $122 a month. If the bond passed, this would uh, show or reflect an increase in property value. We assume a 4% increase, and you would see that the total tax would become $1,800 or $150 a month for an increase of about $360. We realize that is a, um, a lot to ask, but we feel um, now is the time to do this for those safety reasons, and also that the cost and escalating cost of construction continues to rise. We just don't see that getting better in the near future. And so to pay for the same projects down the line, it's going to cost us that much more. This concludes our presentation for the moment. Thank you so much for accessing this information. And if you have any further questions, please just call any school principal or the district office. Thank you and take care.